process of the joining process of joining materials to make object from 3d model data usually layer upon layer as opposed to subtractive manufacturing methodologies su such as traditional machining so they call it additive manufacturing so first stage is that we need to have a 3d model 3d model and we'll use the data from the 3d model to manufacture our item so what is the process the process is just the opposite of the traditional system what was the traditional system uh, milling cutting cnc milling uh, or such kind of uh, machining processes which we are taught in uh, manufacturing processes in traditional basis that are mainly uh, on subtractive uh, manufacturing methodology so we just subtract material from the job so suppose we need to uh, manufacture a product in cnc machine so while we have to put the job for operation we just uh, give the job as a solid body and then the tool just cut the body from the job and uh, give us the desired shape but in case of additive manufacturing it, it does not work with uh, such technologies it, it doesn't subtract materials from the job it just add things layer upon layer so we call it pixels so uh, the system just define the 3d model step by step layer upon layer then we just add the uh, sequential layers and we'll have the 3d body that how additive manufacturing works according to the american society for testing of and materials so there are a little bit confusion uh, regarding additive manufacturing and rapid prototyping uh, sometimes people are confused with rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing actually in the early stage uh, additive manufacturing mainly discovered or work with the additive manufacturing for rapid prototyping and we have to work in industrial sector we need to have some background study on the product so when we have to work on background study we call it research and development for research and development we need rapid prototyping which does not record any functionality but has have to need some model so then uh, in early 1980s uh, scientists work with the prototyping then the theory come with rapid prototyping but nowadays several techniques added with this rapid prototyping and which will give us the function functionality so main part is uh, rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing is that the difference is between two of them is functionality when we work with rapid prototyping it just came with a model with zero functionality but when we call it additive manufacturing we'll have a final product with final uh, functionality so we'll go to the deep uh, at the next slide if anyone have any question, please ask me uh, regarding the previous slide. Okay, so uh, I already uh, described about the rapid prototyping. So uh, main functionality or difference is that uh, the difference is that use use and scalability, not the technology itself. So technology is same. We can use the same three D printer or same stereolithography or same technology for manufactured things. But the, if the final output product has the full functionality to use in the work field or uh, is it possible to make it commercially available after the uh, production then we will call it uh, additive manufacturing but if it does not have the functionality to commercialize then we call it uh, rapid prototyping this is the basic difference between rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing so mainly the concept of additive manufacturing um, came from 1980s when uh, Scientists, scientists are really asked to find out some solution regarding uh, quick uh, R&D. So when we have to work with models, we need uh, some uh, trial and error. So when trial and error occurs in the lab, then we need several models for trial and error, destroying things and simulation things. Then when several uh, model we need, we need short time production unit with zero functionality then people uh, scientists come with the idea stereolithography at 1980s and they name it uh, rapid prototyping and from that sense we just developed the technologies and came with the additive manufacturing thoughts uh, these slides all about the uh, uh, sequential timeline of additive manufacturing so in case of additive manufacturing we can classify it many ways so uh, i just choose the classification from hopkinson and dickens uh, the process is mainly based on the material how the material will, will be on use uh, in case of manufacturing so first of all we can use liquid base 
powder based and solid based so hopkinson and deacon's classification mainly deals with the material used at additive manufacturing uh, we call it in small am process additive manufacturing processes we can classify it uh, through its used material condition so first of all liquid based we can uh, classify it as stereolithography jetting system direct light processing and several processes are also uh, not mentioned here and second is powder based is usually used in metallurgy uh, selective laser sintering three dimensional uh, printing uh, fused metal deposit systems electron beam metal melting selective laser melting selective masking sintering selective inhibition sintering all the processes are uh, kind of little bit similar to each other but a little slight uh, functionality to maybe difference from one to another so we can differentiate them with slight mentioning so i just cover up uh, some basic technologies so that we, we can have a overall view about the technologies as the topics is very much huge and large to cover electro uh, photographic layered manufacturing high speed sintering and uh, third of all solid base this is hugely used in uh, r and d labs for prototyping a fused depos deposition modeling we normally name it after a 3d printer actually 3d printer can be many types but we call fused deposition modeling uh, in general as 3d printer sheet stacking technologies so i will uh, mention and describe about the technologies regarding the hashtag so i will uh, uh, cover up stereolithography direct light processing selective laser melting fused deposition modeling which are very very common in our additive manufacturing field so if anyone has any question regarding uh, the topics up to now i will go to the next topics okay so uh, Rana, stereo sir uh, just finish your presentation and at the end we will take the questions okay thank you sir okay sir so uh, first of all uh, the main uh, the primary topics uh, about uh, additive manufacturing is stereolithography this is very at the very early beginning of additive manufacturing technology development at 1980s uh, mainly rap rapid prototyping step uh, the stereolithography was invented and uh, it is mainly a process of uh, solidifying liquid polymer resin and how we solidify the resin will determine its shape so first of all uh, the technology works with the uv range uh, laser beam when the laser beam impact on the uh, liquid material so we will use actually liquid material as the raw material the liquid material actually a polymer we call it a liquid polymer resin so it has a material condition like if we heat the liquid polymer resin with a laser uh, or uv at uv range then uh, it will just change its shape from liquid to solid so if we can we just direct the if we can just direct the laser at our desired path line which will be uh, directed from the 3d model data and uh, we just direct the actuator through actuator will that will direct the laser and the laser will travel the path 3d path and when it travel the path it will just solidify the liquid uh, phase of the that kind of resin liquid resin so that, that's how still lithography works in the basic sense so i have shown shown here a, a figure a process figure this is a computer where we can put the uh, 3d model normally in case of uh, 3d printing or 3d work or additive manufacturing work we convert our solid works file or any kind of 3d model uh, file into a stl file so dot stl file is the main basic model which will be used as printing so we just use our uh, 3d uh, model uh, convert it into stl file and then we will put it to the processing unit then processing unit will be direct the actuator which will mainly operate the laser beam how the laser beam will be travel along the 3d path according to the stl file so the stl data will go to the actuator then actuator will be uh, help the laser actually direct the laser according to the 3d path and this is the main uh, vat that means basin so where we can put the uh, liquid polymer resin so here is the basin in this basin we will put the liquid polymer resin to solidify according to the, our 3d model 
And this is the main platform where we can uh, begin our uh, scanning. So first of all, at the very beginning, the platform will be just uh, at the surface level. And when uh, the laser first uh, scan the or uh, target the whole uh, 2D area, then it will just uh, down itself. And then next layer will be start. And uh, how this is how the stereo lithography will work in case of this technology. So I have a more detailed work in here uh, figure so that uh, it can be uh, understood easily. So this is the main uh, base where we can put our uh, 3D model final product. This is the actuator and this is the uh, vat, uh, liquid polymer vat or basin. So we'll put our raw material as liquid in this basin. And uh, this part from will hold the final product. And this is the laser, laser uh, base where the laser will uh, move along X and Y axis. And we can also move the Z axis, the base where the final product will be kept. So uh, when I, we put the CAD data to the computer, you convert the STL file to the actuators and actuator will move the a three dimensional uh, actuator actuation um, x y and z axis and that's how the laser will direct along its, its 2d path and uh, when we just finish the first clear along the z axis it will uh, turn down itself down uh, up to one pixel the pixel can be determined according to the accuracy of the printer and thus layer by layer the whole process can be done okay so uh, in case of scanning of the um, scanner for UV band, we, we can have two methods, scanning stereolithography and second is projection stereolithography. There are two methods usually largely used in 3D printer. First use is mainly directing the laser point according to the 3D path. So uh, suppose we can, uh, we, we have a 3D model. This is the 3D model and we need to shape it uh, according to the design. So when we have to shape it, uh, we have to travel the whole system uh, along the path. So if uh, this is the laser beam, so if I want to print the this kind of 3D body, I need to travel the scan target up to the whole point. This is the scanning method. And uh, photo, photo marks or position stereolithography is that we just use a, a film, which film will determine the 2D shape. And uh, when we just filter the laser, I could, uh, through the um, x-ray or uh, film then it will just reach, uh, direct the shape of the 3d body 2d body and one upon up one upon another will just add the levels then we will have the uh, final 3d model the, there are the two there is the two scanning system or uh, fundamental process variant for uh, stereolithography okay i just show up the photo mask method in here so that it can have a clear visualization. This is the light source, UV light source, and this is the DLP, digital light processing. This is the main platform where what, what will be the reflection uh, 2D figure. So the light will be 100% incident into the DLP, but DLP will not reflect 100% of the light. It will just reflect those kind of light which are required for the 3D model. So when DLP reflect the 3D model, it will affect the liquid and solidify the liquid from liquid phase to solid phase. Then we will have a first layer of the 3D model. Then the actuator will move itself up or down. Then the next phase will be started. This is the uh, digital light processing or additive uh, stereolithography system uh, for the whole process. I just complete. I have just completed the stereolithography. It has two scanning processes. Second process is called as DLP or digital light processing or direct light, light processing. So stereolithography mainly used in uh, 3D printer. Nowadays it is used for rapid uh, manufacturing. Uh, in case of fused deposition model or melting material and uh, directing the melting material according to 3D shape is very much time consuming. When we need to need rapid 3D printing, then we will use the stereolithography. It will uh, cover up uh, very less time, 30 minutes or one, one hours for having a one meter cube volume uh, 3D size. Uh, here is a uh, 3D printed from a stereolithography process. And this will take uh, up to uh, 30 minutes to print, but it has some chemical uh, pre 
and post-processing system, which should be followed in case of stereolithography. So uh, there are another advantage of stereolithography that we can use it uh, at micro level. So when we have to print things at micro level, we can print it through stereolithography as it has a laser pointed system. So the how this small the laser target, we will use it as our uh, printing model. Uh, so it has our it is our advantage in case of fuse, fuse deposition or uh, melting material and directing it to the point is difficult because it needs need very specified orifice to feed the uh, liquid material but in case of stereolithography it does not require any kind of nozzle or uh, orifice to travel the liquid material it just need to direct the laser so it can just direct laser at, at the very finest pinpoint so it has the advantage of using micro level printing uh, system so this is a example of uh, stereolithography printing system it just shows how the shape is very small this is the coin and this is the uh, a printing model final outcome from a stereolithography process okay i have added uh, a video regarding stereolithography uh, and this video is from farm labs the um, very cutting edge uh, stereolithography manufacturer. They are just manufacture such kind of 3D printer which are largely used in industry sector. So uh, uh, this uh, is this will sum up the whole processes. This is the basin where the liquid resin will be kept, and we'll use a 3D uh, model to print. So this is the build platform where the material will be kept or uh, final product will be kept. This is the resin tank. We will put the resin tank, liquid resin, which will be just solidify itself where uh, it just keep touch with UV ray. So this kind of liquid resin is used. And this is the laser. Laser will travel along the design path and the shape will be formed at the bath. So this is the post-processing uh, of uh, stereolithography. Mainly alcohol is used for supporting materials. Uh, as we know that 3D printing has need some supporting materials for the final product. Uh, final of all, we will have such kind of uh, flexible uh, product, 3D product. So such kind of material uh, or product is very difficult to print in uh, fused deposition models or traditional 3D printers, but stereolithography has the flexibility to use uh, such kind of material which are not uh, hard or have the flexibility to use. Okay, this is the stereolithography uh, and I have just finished the top topics. The next uh, additive manufacturing topic will be selective laser sintering. So here we will use the powder, uh, as a matter, material condition. So we just classify the additive manufacturing into three parts. First part was about liquid material. Second part was about uh, powder. And third was about solid. So uh, this selective laser sintering, very much similar to the stereolithography process, but the material is solid, uh, powder, solid but powder in powder phase. So uh, it just works like that. Uh, <clears throat> We'll have a uh, reservoir where the powder will be kept and we'll direct the powder to the final printing base. So this is the final fabrication piston. This will be uh, kept at the first stage and we'll, uh, this roller will be used to travel the powder from the reservoir to the final base. When the powder uh, travel to the final base, we'll use our actuator, same process, we'll use the 3D model at STL file, then the file data will actuate the scanner system, then the scanner system will travel along the 3D path, which are determined, predetermined by the 3D model, and uh, the powder are such kind of that it will uh, center itself or join itself to form the 3D model along the path that is directed from the laser. So when the laser just travels the path, uh, the powder will convert into solid. And when the first step is done, then again, the fabrication piston will down itself and, it, and there will be empty place for new material. Then we'll again roll the material from 
the power delivery system to the final uh, fabrication piston. Then again, the laser will be uh, work for the second step, then third step, then fourth step. And for every step, the fabrication piston will be down itself from uh, upper level, lower level. That's how the whole process will be done. And after the final product, we'll have a 3D model when we, we just need to remove the extra powder and we can use reuse the extra powder material which are not uh, get touch with the scanned uh, or scanner system or laser system then we just we can just use the system uh, or powder into the power delivery system so i just add a uh, this is very much similar to the stereolithography just the material is, is different from stereolithography so I just add the add a video. Uh, this is a laser tech where uh, this kind of technology is used. So here they are going to uh, manufacture some product. So we just import a turbine, uh, turbine blade or pump blade for manufacturing, and in a steel form. So this is the main base where the product will be uh, manufactured. So uh, this is the HMI, human machine interface. Every kind of machine has such kind of HMI. And this is the scanner, and this is the bait where the powder material will be kept. The scanner will be travel the paths according to the 3D data and the powder will convert into solid. And after completing one 2D phase, the roller will be run over the surface. So this is the roller and this is our final product. And this is the feed feeder. That means the uh, powder will be provided from such kind of reservoir. This is the powder, first dinner is done for the production. Okay, just we just scan the ruler over the uh, final uh, production base. Then the scanner will be run and uh, according to the 3D data. After completing one 2D uh, plane, we'll again roll the ruler for the material feed. And after that, the second uh, stage will be started. So we can have a look at the final product so that uh, the process can be very much clear to us. So this is the main base. We'll just uh, clear the extra uh, powder from the material and finally we'll have the product. And we can reuse the uh, powder for next use. So after that we can just uh, give some machining over the model so that it can be usable in the practical field as uh, powder methodology has, has some problem regarding uh, sharpness so that we just need some machining after the uh, final production. Okay, so uh, selective laser sintering can be used mainly in uh, mechanical field or automobile or aerodynamics uh, because there are certain shapes which are very much costly to work with CNC machines. So there we can use uh, the process or where the material should be metal, then uh, there is a requirement regarding, um, there is a limitation regarding stereolithography or uh, fused position modeling. So in case of material choosing, if we need a metal based uh, 3D product, then we can use SLS system or selective laser sintering system so that we, the final product will be with the uh, metal. Okay. So uh, I've just covered the two topics, stereolithography and selective laser sintering. Uh, these are one of the uh, two of the most used uh, additive manufacturing technologies in manufacturing field. But in case of R&D department or research and development department uh, or prototyping department, hugely used 3D printer is FDM. We call it fused deposition modeling. But nowadays 
FDM is largely used in aerospace or uh, other kind of uh, manufacturing technologies where uh, manufacturing support is not uh, available. Like when uh, the NASA is trying to uh, manufacture things at the space, then uh, they they have very limited uh, supporting tools so that they use FDM as their manufacturing process. Uh, and nowadays, uh, this kind of piece division model are largely used in research and development section. The main process is very simple. Uh, it just use a solid matter, raw materials and uh, there is nozzles where the solid material will travel in a uh, cylindrical form and the nozzle will just give the temperature up to the melting point of that material and when we have the melting point then the nozzle pressurize the liquid material to the directed trajectory path. So we will put the 3D model to the, uh, to the processing system, then 3D model, the data of the 3D model will be given to the actuation system or actuator, then the actuator will be uh, travel the nozzle according to the 3D path. So uh, while we are using stereolithography or SLS system, whole thing is work with the laser, but now we just replace the system from laser to a nozzle where the nozzle will just heat up the material which will be used for final production. So um, we need a roller build material spool. We call it a spool. And the spool can be determined the material property, APS, PLA. There are different kinds of material according to the required property. Or that can be metal nowadays. That can be metal. Uh, and uh, uh, we can use different materials at a time. Uh, ac according to the number of nozzle, we can have the facility to add spools so that uh, if we need three or four colors or um, one supportive material or four printing material or composite material or a different material for different uh, same machine but different material in different condition or different 3D point then we will use diff uh, more than one nozzle fitting nozzle and so that we can add the material according to the nozzle number so if we have five nozzle we can use uh, five spool for the uh, feeding system. So normally in case of a basic uh, fuse deposition model, we use two spool. Uh, one spool is used for uh, final production material and second spool is for used for supporting material. Supporting material is uh, such kind of material which are dissolved with chemical reaction and we can just remove the uh, supporting material after the final production. So in here, I uh, show in the figure that there are two spools and both are connected with the nozzle. And this nozzle will just uh, rise its temperature up to the melting point according to the spool. Suppose we have a material, uh, first material has a melting point of uh, 200 degree and second spool is melting up to 300 degree. So we just have to generate a 200 and 300 degree melting point so that uh, the material will melt itself. And there will be a uh, pressing system or pushing system, cylindrical system or hydraulic system, which will just uh, pressurize the liquid material up to the uh, desert 3D location. So we, actu we just actuate the base and the nozzle position to fix the nozzle point. So according to the 3D data, we'll just travel the 3D point of the nozzle and uh, when the molded material uh, drop into the desert location, it will just solidify within very short time. This is one kind of property of printing material that we need to solidify itself within a very limited time. So that after finalizing the first layer, it will just uh, down itself, the base platform, then the next step will be added. According to the American Society, of uh, engineers, uh, so I call it, uh, I uh, re recall it that the main thing is that we need to manufacture it step by step. This is the main uh, concept of additive manufacturing. So after finalizing the first phase, uh, base will be down itself and the next next step will be started. And uh, in case of this division model, there's some material strength problem or kind of solution. Uh, mainly depend on the on the uh, pattern of traveling path. So, uh, what will be the pattern of traveling the, uh, when it just uh, finishing the first layer? So we can uh, predetermine it according to its density, material density, or 
uh, material strength, we can uh, give the pattern of the layer, first layer, second layer. Then there's need a pattern of traveling to and fro. It, will, it can travel to and fro. It can travel horizontally. It can travel as a honeycomb shape uh, or triangular shape. So that kind of shape can be predetermined uh, over the software used in the uh, 3D printer, piece deposition model for FDM. So uh, I've just uh, give the example uh, um, for the previous technology from uh, outside of uh, various cutting edge factories or manufacturers, but this 3D printer is mainly at our uh, Kula University of Engineering Technology at Fab Lab Kuwait, Fabrication Library Kuwait. We have a 3D printer at Kuwait uh, named after Ultimaker 3 Extended. So I have a privilege to use it uh, and I can, I, I have a privilege to operate it for the first time and I'm the person, first person to uh, operate it and manufacture a, or print a MOG. This uh, MOG is printed by me and uh, I've designed it and printed it and drink water from, uh, with this uh, MOG. So this uh, theta printer is mainly used at fabrication laboratory quit for prototyping, uh, not final production. Uh, we have worked with uh, one research-based project. This is ear uh, ear uh, condition monitoring device, mainly a master's project from a civil engineering department. Uh, this this was cost about uh, five thousand, where the main product is cost almost five lakhs. And uh, this is from architecture department. We just uh, printed some models of stadium and structures with our 3D printer, and this is a, a propeller, mainly used at speedboard or such kind of uh, fluid mechanics. So, so uh, this 3D printer is mainly a three axis uh, actuation system, so the nozzle can move X, Y, and Z direction. X and Y uh, is mainly controlled with the nozzle control, so this nozzle will travel along X and Y direction. And the main main base, this is the base. Uh, base can be controlled with only Y direction. So this base uh, travel along the Y direction. And this nozzle travel X and Y direction. And the final feed material or the raw material will be, uh, the spool will be overhang beside us, beside the uh, printer. And uh, we just need to give the STL file and then it will start its printing. And there's some heating material at the base. Uh, the main purpose of giving heating material at the base is that when the uh, molded material drop to the base, there's need need a requirement of sticking it uh, up to the uh, base because if it just uh, suddenly removed from the base, then the whole process will be uh, dislocated from one layer to another layer. So first printing layer must be stick to the base. So for that, we need to keep the base warm and heated. So we will use a coil. There is a, a coil preheated uh, before the uh, starting of the print. And uh, after the final production, we need to remove the material. So in case of removing any kind of uh, 3D printed material, we need to heat the base. So the, when removing the uh, material, we just need a command that we are going to remove the material so that the uh, base will be overheated and for overheating, uh, the material has some flexibility to remove itself from the base so that we just remove it from the base. But in case of uh, supporting material, suppose uh, if I want to uh, print this uh, base, uh, mog, then I have to print the handling system or this uh, supporting system. So when I have to print this kind of uh, shape, I need support, which will just give the support to the base material. So mainly uh, the supporting material are mainly alcohol based and uh, they are uh, soluble to the liquid. So there is capacity of using two spool as we have two uh, nozzle at our 3D printer, printer. So that after final production, we need to uh, use the final product to a basin where the water is kept. And when we just uh, drop the material, submerge the material to the liquid, then the alcohol will solidify itself. After that, we can have final. Mainly, this is the ABS material. There are certain kind of uh, materials which are used in 3D printers. Uh, one of them is ABS. 
Okay, I just I have just finished the fuse deposition modeling. For fuse deposition modeling, nowadays uh, metal are also used, and uh, there are certain printers fuse deposition modeling. Uh, they can print aerospace structures or turbines or even uh, house. They can print house from 3D printer fuse deposition modeling. But this is very much time consuming. For this printing, we need 20. Uh, it was almost 16 hours to print. For this model and for this mock it required almost six to seven hours to paint so uh, this kind of fuse division mod division modeling is very much time consuming and as it just need to liquidify the material and then wait for the solidification of that kind of material and then go for the next step that's why uh, it will take last time but for stolithography and other processes it just uh, phase its change no matter uh, it, it doesn't require to uh, solidify itself or liquidify itself for Phase changing. <clears throat> so I've just finished the uh, fuse deposition modeling, and this is the last topics of additive manufacturing to cover up the whole system, uh, laminated object manufacturing. Uh, so uh, this is a very similar technology uh, considering to the stereolithography or uh, direct uh, light projection uh, or so this process mainly works with the films. Uh, Previously, in case of stereolithography, we use uh, uh, liquid resin or next technology was about using powder material. But in this case, we will use films. This kind of films uh, will be the main material for uh, printing. So this is the um, final pool. Uh, uh, this is the initial pool. So finally, uh, initially we will use a uh, spool or film so this film will be guided with a roller and this roller will have a uh, base platform just below the laser point and then after the final film will be come up so how this will work we'll just travel uh, layer by layer films so when first film is along with the base and uh, the laser will direct the 3d model uh, sorry 2d model onto the film then the film will be uh, separated from uh, the Printed product will be separated from the film, and the film will be rest, rest of the film will be deposited to the second uh, film roller or spool, and then the next uh, phase of the roller will be started again. The will be uh, again targeted at the point. This process will be uh, run over again and again uh, through these films and lasers. Then after that, uh, after finalizing the product, we'll have several layers which will be uh, chemically bonded with each other. And when we have uh, 2D printing with films and multiple films one after another, then we'll have the final product, 3D product. We call it laminated object manufacturing as uh, this kind of material is uh, paper, plastic, ceramic, or composite uh, sheets, then we can use it as LOM. So sometimes we need papers or plastic or ceramics or composite materials to print things which are not easy to melt at 100% and uh, use it at fuse deposition modeling. Or this is not like uh, liquid resin, which are just solidified in touch of uh, laser. So such kind of material can be printed in sheet form and we will use large manufacturing in case of, uh, we, we can use it in large, large manufacturing processes. So this is a uh, 3D model of such kind of production. This is the fill. And after having the platform, the platform will use to uh, first phase and the laser will be pointed to the platform and we will have a, 3D a 2D shape. And then the rest of the film will be rejected. And the second stage will, will be again uh, started and the 2D product will be uh, generated again. So we will have several layers of 2D product and finally we'll have the 3D product. So here's a video of uh, how it will works. This is the uh, uh, installed raw material of films. And this is the feeder. And uh, this is the base form where the laser will be targeted. This is the laser and this is the spin gel which will be actually actuator and direct the laser pointed where the laser should be traveled like in 3D data. And this is when the uh, laser cut the shapes from the inserted film, then we will have the rejected portion. 
So first of all, the roller will be travel along the process so that the metal is in level position. And then the laser will be directed according to the 3D data and it, it will cut the full uh, 2D shape. After cutting the shape, the uh, platform will be down itself. So layer upon layer, we will have to roll the um, inserted spool and rejected spool and we'll have such kind of 3D model. Okay, so uh, this is the process. So uh, um, I've just finished the process, all the processes regarding additive manufacturing uh, and rest of the topics will be advantages and disadvantages and also the materials. Uh, sir, should I cover the advantages and disadvantages regarding additive manufacturing? Uh, I think that's okay. That's all right. Okay, sir. You don't need to talk about advantages or disadvantages sir. because uh, during your presentation, you have already mentioned a lot about sir, sir. the advantages and others. Yep, that's all right. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, should okay, you stop uh, the sharing, sir? Uh, no, no, no. Okay, keep, keep it there. And do you have any question from audience? Yes, sir, uh, I have a question for 3D modeling. Yes. Who is uh, uh, like the one we are using yes. the Kunan University? So, what kind of uh, software do we have to use uh, to make the okay. output file? And yes, output okay. file. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'll give a practical example so that it will have give the clear identification regarding file and software. And so I've just shown a uh, 3D printer at our Kuwait. Uh, so that is, okay. So in case of every kind of commercial 3D printer, they will give the operating software. So in case of Ultimaker, they have dedicated software for running the Ultimaker. Okay. So when we use a um, 3D model uh, from PC, there is a saving option, save as. So when we have a save as option, you, you, you can just scroll down and there will be another option called dot .stl. So when you have you have the facility to save it in STL format, you can mm -hmm. use it at pen drive. So in case of this kind of 3D printer, you have a USB port. This is a USB port. So when you have the STL format, every kind of CNC and uh, 3D printer or uh, modern manufacturing processes where the 3D model are used for manufacturing. Actually, the processing, processing system mainly works with, uh, this is called uh, G-code, geometric code. So uh, mainly when we just uh, give a, or we just create a 3D model up, uh, from SOLIDWORKS or AutoCAD or other kind of CAD innovator, we just facilitate the system with such kind of geometric code. So when we need to give the geometric code to the machine, we need to save the model in STL form. So when uh, I have a model in STL form from our, my PC for any kind of uh, designing console, I just use the uh, soft copy of that model uh, at USB port, then uh, the USB port will directly pop up with this screen and it will find out the only st still file. You can have image file or any kind of 3D shape, but it can only uh, find the um, still file. So we just have to uh, select the shape. But if there is a problem with dimension, so suppose you have a 3D model, uh, which are much larger than this volume, but uh, in case of uh, such kind of condition, you need to use the interpreter software. A such kind of interpreter software are given with the manufacturer, like this Ultimaker 3D Extended also give a interpreter software, uh, which, uh, which will be mainly used for interfacing the model or geometric uh, condition of uh, volume, this required volume or your design condition. So when you just have opened the software, you will just insert the STL file, then it will virtually show the 3D printer and the model. And you can have uh, identify the relative condition. What is the pace, place, or what is the location where the print will be happen? And after uh, how much time it will be required? Uh, I or think what you, will be the you make it clear. Okay, so and how about the uh, surface finishing of the product? 
of okay uh, there is a condition of yes sir, yes sir. this is uh, there is a dimension when we have to purchase any kind of 3d printer we must require to read the specification and for any kind of 3d printer the must identified on required specification is pixel condition so pixel condition is in case of any kind of uh, screen uh, lcd screen we need we know that uh, screen are, are created with very small pixels one one another 2d pixels condition but in case of 3d we call it 3d pix pixels so they actually use stepper or servo motors to actuate the uh, laser system or uh, nozzle system so how smooth or how small the step will be for the stepper motor will be determined by the pixels and such pixels is very much important for the surface condition as uh, the nozzle will travel from one point to another point. So when it just step one point to another point, it just travel one pixel. So the more small the pixel will be, the more uh, specified and smooth the surface will be. But in case of rough surface, suppose there is a design here, it has a very rough surface because we uh, finally, if we use the 100% of the capacity of this kind of altimeter 3 extended, we would need almost 72 hours uh, to uh, print this model. So we just uh, use a rough surfacing and minimize the pixels. So the surface roughness is very high, but the time will be very less. So, yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay, I, I must also add something something with this. Uh, it, uh, the surface finishing is also dependent on the, on the filament size or the nozzle diameter. Uh, sure. Because if the nozzle diameter is larger, then uh, it will be difficult to control the surface texture. And also the, uh, the, the step between uh, two lines. Uh, it's actually the lines through which the nozzle travel. And the, the distance between one line to another line uh, should be as uh, overlapping between uh, those two filaments. Uh, it depends on those two. Uh, for example, if you want to cut a, uh, a, a plain surface using using a end mill, then you need to do some overlap. Otherwise, uh, there will be uh, uh, some roughness created during the finishing. So it acts like sim a similar way. Uh, it depends on the diameter of the uh, nozzle, uh, then the diameter of the filament that's coming out of the nozzle and also the pixel that uh, Rana was talking about, that means the distance between the two lines. Okay. Right. Uh, so, all right, Mahabub Hassan has uh, raised his hand. Uh, please go ahead. Assalamualaikum, sir. Uh, sir, thank you very much through you to uh, uh, Rana Bhai uh, okay. for a nice presentation. Sir, I had a query particularly, is there any kind of material using limitation? Like you cannot use this kind of material for this kind of production, something like that. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so uh, there is a variant in material selection. I have a topics on materials, but the slide is very much large to cover up. So I just skip the material okay. selection. Okay, so in short, uh, we have uh, uh, for field division modeling, mainly in field division modeling, we need the capacity to mill down the material. So in that case, we can use polymer, uh, polymide, nylon, ABS, PLA. So uh, there is a metal limitations and chart according to the ASTA, ASTM, sorry, they give a chart according to the material and uh, the first, any kind of machine designing, we need the stress strain diagram. So if we need the required stress and strain for that kind of particular material, we have a chart to uh, find out the product. So suppose I need a certain uh, Pascal uh, or Newton per meter square stress for certain structure so we just i just use the chart for such kind of uh, choosing the such kind of material so i just find out that abs or pla will be the material so uh, so suppose i use a PA, abs material so abs material has a strength up to certain num numerical values so i can increase it or decrease it with adding another uh, additives or another spool so we can use different spools for strengthening our final product this is for nylon or uh, materials which are uh, which can be solid uh, solidify or liquidify with nozzle heating but uh, there are some certain products we are, which are like like uh, metals so uh, suppose we need a, a 3d printer and printing material and the final product will be metal based then we cannot use fused division modeling as this is very much a high melting point and uh, this is possible to use fused deposition, deposition modeling for metal-based production, but this is not uh, cost efficient and very much costly. 
So then we can use the powder metallurgy like uh, SLS, uh, direct laser sintering that we have covered just after the. So the main thing is that we need to uh, find out from the machine designing concept, what is the required stress and strength, then we'll use the chart for determining the material. So we can have uh, for ABS and PLA different kind of stress and strain condition, elasticity and temperature condition or such kind of material property which are required for any kind of uh, production. So, yeah, Rana, uh, actually the Mahabhufasan has asked you about the limitation of the material. Uh, uh, I, I must add that uh, there are very limited amount of material that can be used with this technology because this technology is still yes, new sir. and it's growing. Okay, yes, so uh, there's not many material you can use like PVC. You cannot use PVC because there, yes, it yes, has yes. not been done. Uh, a lot of research needs to be conducted to uh, produce product using uh, PVC. The mostly used uh, materials that are used for uh, additive manufacturing is like uh, nylon, ABS, and PLA. Uh, among them, I think PLA is the better one because it has low shrinkage. Uh, there are a lot of variable actually for uh, theory. Sure, exactly. So uh, to obtain certain uh, certain stress or strain that Rana was talking about, uh, the, it depends on the hot material you want to use. Like uh, for uh, if you want to use a product in uh, which require a lot of stress, uh, you got to support a lot of stress. You need to go to the metal. In that case, you can use the powder bed system or uh, selective laser sintering. Uh, these are the options. Uh, and also, you cannot use all the metals, okay? Because uh, the field is still growing. So, so there sir, are limited sir. amount of is metals it? that you can use uh, so, for the production, okay? So nowadays, sir, uh, most of the PhD funding and master's funding are going on according to the, in this Yeah, because field. this is a growing field. Sir, you know? sir, exactly, sir. Uh, and also, this is not, uh, not still, uh, this, this system is not cost effective. So people are trying harder and harder exactly, to sir. make it cost effective and uh, very user friendly uh, to get the uh, desired outcome. Sir, thank you very much, sir. And Ranabai, thank you very much. Okay, any other question from anyone else? Abdullah has raised his hand. Sir, yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, thank you. Thank you, Rana, for his nice presentation. But I am a little bit uh, confused about the title of presentation, Additive Manufacturing. Uh, is it uh, we are going to manufacture additive or we are going to uh, manufacture product with additive? I'm a little bit confused. Additive, here the term additive mainly defined the Add material one upon another. Uh, so I have to go uh, to the definition. additive, maybe a material, right? Yes, yes. Uh, but uh, uh, the Abdullah, title additive, uh, we are going to manufacture product with additive using additive manufacturing technology. Yes, okay, the additive, the term additive is used because uh, in the conventional machining, you have a, for example, block, you cut it to give it a desired yes. shape, right? Yes, sir. In the conventional machining process. But in this additive manufacturing process, what you do is you don't have any block. You have like powder or liquid like material. You add the materials layer by layer to produce a product, to give it a shape. That's why we call it additive manufacturing. And the yes, conventional sir. machining process, sometimes people now use another word like subtracting machining. Okay, <laughs> because yes, we are. Sir extracting materials from a block of material to produce, give it a certain structure. Okay? Yes, sir. You understand, Abdullah? Yes, sir. Uh, another question, another question. Okay. Sure. Not question like, just uh, I need to know the view of Rana. Uh, all the four methods uh, uh, you explained uh, very clearly, but uh, in uh, fused uh, decomposition modeling, maybe it's very, uh, it takes uh, much time, right? Exactly. And, and what about a laminated system? In case of laminated system, the main problem is that uh, you cannot use uh, like, it has limitations with the- Is, is, is it uh, takes more, uh, more time uh, like, is decomposition modeling? Yes, obviously, because it works with the 2D shape. Uh, so like I have to go to the slide. So uh, first of all, you just have to complete the first phase. 
and then again the ruler will come to play in the next step. So this to and fro condition and uh, waiting for solid, uh, jointing from one layer to another layer, layer is very time consuming. And that's Just why- Piling up layers after layers, piling yeah. the layers one after another. Yes, yes. Layer. Maybe uh, layer, it, layer, it is not layer, possible so all up. kinds of geometric shape, right? Uh, yes, exactly. It's not possible for all kinds of geometric shape. Uh, nice plane, decal, uh, circular, maybe a complex shape. Not possible. Uh, uh, whereas uh, in the Sintard system, it is possible mass, right? Yes, yes. Okay, Thank then uh, do you have any other question? If not, uh, I have a question to Rana. Sir. Sure. That in the case of selective laser melting or powder bed fusion system, okay, um, you yeah, have this one. If there is a cylindrical hole horizontally placed, okay, inside yes, the material, then what will happen? No, sir, I, I uh, not clear with the question, sir. Uh, for, for your final product that yes, you are sir. showing here, like uh, it's kind of ellip, ellip, uh, ellipse, okay? half ellipse. Yes, sir. Uh, if there is a hole, that means a spherical hole or cylindrical hole on the material, on the product, then how this machine will interact? Mm, it just work with the 2D shape. Uh, first of all, the base will be at the top portion and the laser will just uh, suppose there is a 3d model and the software will just slice the 3d model into certain uh, 2d shapes uh, so if we need a hole to the uh, 3d final 3d model then we will just add the hole uh, each and every 2d shapes so that it just complete one and after another and summiting up we will have a, a hole to the 3d model Sir, you say the inner hole, I think. Inner yes, hole. I was talking hole. about the inner hole. If there is an inner void. Okay, so uh, uh, okay, okay. I, I'm clear with the question. So I just need to uh, draw a figure for this. So suppose. Uh, draw a 2D figure, okay? okay this, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Suppose uh, this is a block, normal block, yep, and we need to have a uh, hole in there yep. inside the. So, so we just have to slide the. Uh, Whole body. Yep. So I'm for better understanding. I just using one, two, three, three four. four. Five, yeah. Okay. So for a uh, first layer, one for one layer, there is no hole. So yep. it will just scan. It will, it will be with a solid body. Yep. Yes. It will be a solid. For body. this, yes, sir. For the second phase, the yep. uh, second phase, as there's a little slide, I will consider it as a full block. So for easy understanding, so this is the whole whole section. So for two section. Well, it will uh, take the data from the still file and direct the uh, laser. Then it will just travel along this path and this path. It will it will not not travel along the hole. Along the hole, yep. That's okay. right. So this is the second phase. Uh, at the third phase, it will also find a hole. So it will only travel the solid phase and solid phase and skip the hollow phase. And for the fourth fourth phase, it will not have any kind of data for uh, this hole. So yeah. it will just travel the whole surface. So the powders will be trapped inside? Uh, not like that, as it will uh, work step by step. For every step, uh, we'll use roller. So uh, for in case of in case of such kind of uh, manufacturing technology, we'll use uh, gas, liquid gas, inert gas, just to remove the material from the first layer. So just uh, before the if you remove the re remove the material from there, sir. then uh, there will be voids, right? Then uh, the top layer of the powder will not be in place. Right? Not like that, sir. Like uh, after completing one, and we will have two. Yep. And according to the logic, there will be uh, the powdered material inside the hole. Yep, that's right. So just before going to the next step. Uh, I, I will have zero material at the uh, in the hole. number three step. So I, I'm not running the roller. So without okay. the roller, there will be no material just uh, up to on 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 the uh, product uh, up to now. So I will use inert gas to just remove the material as blow at uh, using the blower so that the material will be removed. After that, uh, the um, 
roller will be travel along the system or i can use the support for this hole i'm not clear about that yeah that's the difficulty in 3d painting you know because if you remove the material before the top layer then the then powders on the top layer will drop down to down yes. into the hole yes sir okay yes sir yes sir but uh, sir there is some uh, materials which will be used for uh, supporting the second yes, layer yes of course that is preempt of course there has to be some method to method. apply another material or use a small hole through which the material can be extracted from that inside from inside for example if you want to make a steel ball with 5 mm thickness uh, then you can uh, you can make it okay it's all right you can make it by slice by slice but if the hole is completely inside that is a really challenging job so this is for <laughs> every kind of material if you use cnc yeah. machining yeah, or casting you have to consider the material removing process which are not yes. required yes, yes definitely <laughs> yeah. yeah that was, that is the hard Shipping part process. Shipping Shipping process. Thing, actually uh, anyway the, you have, you have uh, given a really nice presentation and a really uh, good introduction to the technology It's a still growing technology and a lot of research is going on on this technology so that people can get used to this and um, people are mostly trying to make it more economical so that uh, it can be used by uh, all sort of industries uh, to produce their product uh, as very uh, very in a very short time okay uh, so uh, thank you rana for your nice presentation so you, and Uh, we'll be having another class on thursday uh, on the on that day saifullah and um, who is left for presenting saifullah are you here sir ama present present to hoy oh tomar hoy hoy se sajid 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 bhai sajid sajid bhai then sajid and who else there's in there was another one or oh, anyway Uh, so uh, they will be presenting on the next uh, thursday if they can they can't then i will conduct the class okay yes sir thank you all right have a good night then okay sir